got the hand claps and all that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I feel famous already. <laughs> nah. Take a bow. So. Here we go, man. It's the first episode, episode one. It's the Free Jams podcast. Um, I'm giving the people what they want, man. It's been some time now. A lot of people don't know me. Uh, some of you who do, you might know me as Ez. I do tattoos or whatever. Um, I'm from Jersey, North Jersey, Bergen County, Benjamin County to be exact. You yes, know what I'm sir. saying? Yes, I, got, uh, I got my right-hand man with me. You know what I'm saying? My boy, Kamal. You can tell him a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm going to let him rattle off. This is the first episode, so... You know what I'm saying? All this is organic. We're trying to start from the very beginning. Uh, I'm going to give y'all a little explanation. It's almost going to be like a manifesto episode where we're going to explain like what we're trying to do, where the direction of this podcast is supposed to go, like what we're trying to uh, accomplish with the content we're putting out. And um, yeah, we start from the beginning to the point where we don't got no logos. I don't got no branded shirts. I'm, no, none of you know that. what I'm saying? I'm wearing other people's brands. We're going to change all of this. Very organic. Very organic. <laughs> it's very organic. We literally just Googled the picture of a diamond, threw it up here. You know what I'm saying? We starting off fresh. So, you know what I'm saying? Pardon me because we're beginners, but we we going we gonna to get the ball rolling. I'm going to let my boy Kamal go ahead and write to y'all too. How you doing? I'm Kamal. Um, also from Benjamin County. Uh, real estate agent. North Jersey area. Yes, sir. Uh, greater, greater New York City area, so... Yes, sir. We're from Teaneck, to be exact. Yes, to be exact. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and Teaneck, Bergen County, for those who don't know, we're literally five minutes from New York City. We're right across the bridge from the Joe Washington Bridge. Uh, it's damn near like the sixth borough. I always tell people Nah, that. seriously. It like, really if, is, if, like, if you know anything about, like, Bergen <laughs> County, man, like, I would say 60, 70 percent of minorities come from New York City. And, and if not... Maybe Newark or Patterson, but that's that's a whole nother demographic, whole nother yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's definitely a separate culture, but... We definitely get our influence from over the bridge. Not and, for sure. And then we spin it and make it our own. Nah, yeah, literally. But not own. for now, yeah. Everything from, everything from New York ends up in Jersey. Well, at least North Jersey, because I can't speak for nothing south of Newark. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> south Jersey is its own... Middle Jersey, South Jersey, New Brunswick. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It gets real out there, but, like, I, it's fucking weird. Niggas is down there doing... What, what's that shit that niggas used to do? That Jersey Club shit? Hate it. Uh, hate it. Hate it. Hate it. I know. <laughs> like, Jersey Club, that's Newark and South, but we... We we was more getting light and shit like that. Yeah, doing yeah, 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 we yeah, was, for real, for real. Ah, doing the touch. <laughs> so we're literally learning. I'm I'm tapping on the table. You know what I'm saying? But um, so we are gonna get into it. We are gonna be talking. Uh, probably give you about an hour of just content. I'm gonna have to edit certain things. Cause I'm probably gonna just be rattling off. Cause I'm this is like I said, this is the very first episode. So gotta start from somewhere, right? You gotta jump right in it. Nah, for sure. And that's kind of what I that's kind of what I'm doing right now is I'm jumping right in. I, I I've been talking about how we gotta take the initiative of just going and doing what we, you know what I'm saying, what we've been planning and talking about doing because people do a lot of talking but don't actually go and get to it. You know what I mean? That yes, it's it's funny because um I was speaking to you yesterday. I was telling him that we're very analytical. We think things we we're we're planners. We we need everything to be perfect, but that's not how the world works. That's not how it works. You sometimes you just got to jump right in. Yeah, and that's the thing. When you try to do too much planning, you never actually get to execute. You know what I'm saying? So you'll get caught up in the planning and four or five years will go by and you never started what you said you was going to start. I have a great analogy for you. Think about it like having a baby. Uh-huh. You can plan all you want. You know, you can take all the classes you want, but nothing will prepare you for having that baby until you have it. No, Once facts. you're a first-time parent... <laughs> That's when you learn the trick of the trade. There's no amount of classes you could take that will prepare you from actually having it. So, you know, sometimes you just got to have that baby, whatever that might be. Damn. <laughs> yeah, you was metaphorically talking about it, baby. I ain't mad at that. But Seriously. Yeah, nah, you're, not, you're not lying. It's, it's funny you saying that because you're not a parent, and, and I am, and you're 100% on the money. Like, but that doesn't surprise me because you've always been super knowledgeable. <laughs> one of the smartest people I know. Literally one of the most talented, too. Like, wow, I appreciate you. Nah, seriously. for real, bro. Every, no. Ever since we were kids, bro, like, I don't understand how you were so good at everything. Like, literally everything. Like, I'm talking about this motherfucker's a math whiz. The motherfucker's an athletic, like, phenom since we were kids. He was breaking ninth grade records when we were, like, sixth, seventh grade, literally. Like, records that still stand to this day for, like, running the mile. Like, what, what did you run in, like, seventh grade? Wasn't it, like, a five-minute and 45-second mile or something like that? So... Uh, so, something like it that. It was something like that. But something I mean, the like record that. was something like something like the that. The record was like five fifty. You broke it in seventh grade, then you came eighth grade and, and broke it at like yeah, five fifteen. Yeah, yeah, it was something like that. I'm pretty that, sure that still like stands that. to this day. Like, yeah, we gotta check that. We gotta check the records. <laughs> we, we gotta, gotta check the archives. Check but not for that, man. Also one of the hardest working <laughs> one of the hardest working people I know too. So that's why I, you know I actually look up to him, even though he's like only about six months older than me, you know what I'm saying? Like this like a mentor to me when it comes down to it. Like I I learned so much from him, his family, and just just everybody, anything that he's associated with, I've learned something from. Even if it's just his college friends, 
everything, you know what I mean? So I, I definitely an insightful dude. I listen to pretty much anything Kamal got to say. So and and I can literally say the same about you. You put you push me just as well. You know, motivate me just as well. Mm-hmm. When I know sometimes. I'm slacking on my game. I know you out there <laughs> doing your thing. You've always been that way. No, for o- sure. Always, o- always been that way. Always about your work, and you know now it's starting. You starting to see some of the fruits of that labor. No, for sure. Thank seriously, you, bro. seriously. You know, <laughs> thank you. You, 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 I appreciate do, you it. doing big things, and you only inspire me. Inspire a lot of people no, around you, us. Bro. You know, thank a lot you, of the younger people, a lot of the older people. See, that's exactly what this is seriously, about, though. Because seriously. I've been talking to people. I've been talking on Instagram for years now seriously. about, yo, get up, go do it. Nah, thank you, bro, for real. Because I've been telling you, get up, go do it. And people have been telling me for years, like, yo, bro, start a podcast. I'm always on the internet, <laughs> playing around. I can be funny. I can be informative, whatever you would need me to be. I, I Sometimes I'll be just motivational. And sometimes I'll, I, could, I could be vulnerable. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's important. Like, vulnerability is so important. Like, people having a, a sense of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not embarrassment, but when you're a... Uh, Humility. Humility. Yes, humility. 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 Like, humility yes. is so important, yes. bro. Because if you're not ready for, if you're not ready to be humiliated, when that moment comes, man, it could destroy you. Absolutely. Like, if you're, if you're not, yeah, absolutely. Like that, yeah. Humility, man. Some people, they never recover from stuff from certain things. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, uh, it's important to be vulnerable. Don't think you're a superhero. Don't think that it's, it's bad to show weakness at certain points. You know. Um, but definitely pick your battles wisely. So you know what I mean. Like it's all part of the journey, though. It's, it's it's all part of the journey, and that's what that's what people don't understand. People, you know, they only see the highlights. And yeah, I mean, we live in a world of highlights, like for real, man. We gotta talk about that all the time on, on Instagram to people, like to clients and stuff. Um, like I said, I'm a tattoo artist, which makes me like a, a part time like psychologist, like a, ca- a counselor to people. Same here, bro. <laughs> in real estate, bro, what? I get all the family tea, everything. Really? Oh, people, man. People, people get messy with the agents? Oh, bro, bro. I've, <laughs> people confide in me so many things. You what? know, I've dealt with, yeah, man, it's... No, nah, it's tough. You know, I, and and I, I really appreciate what I do because, you know, I feel like I'm part of their family, you know? Not because true. Because when I work for some, with someone or a family, I work with them for a few months at a time. So, you know, even after it's over... You know, it, it's all love. It, it'll always be love. I feel like, you know, every time I really cater to clients and you know fulfill their needs, that I'm extending my family tree because wow. I can call them. I can call up, you know, my clients now in the past, and it'll be all love. Shit, you cut me the kind of check they cut you. You be family too. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> I know them closing calls, man. The closing man, checks is shit. nice, man. I, yeah, I, they, nah, I, I love seeing what you're doing, bro, because you've been growing real, real big in that business. So the whole real estate thing, man. I already know you're gonna be a. Yeah, you're already a mogul if you ask me, because I, I believe that you, the president is here. And you, like I'm manifesting it for you, so I'm not gonna say you're going to be a mogul. You are a mogul. You're a billionaire if you ask me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But now, real talk, it makes sense though when you talk about uh, being and feeling like your family with these people because you are such a big step to like their, them creating their family and their foundation. Absolutely. That that buying that first home for a family is like real big. Like you know, that's something I've, I've always stressed to people too. Cause I, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I, I tell people all the time. I don't sell homes. I'm in a relationship business. Mm. That's all it is. It's That's just deep. relationship. <laughs> Seriously. Ding, yeah. Thank Seriously. you. We needed a bell on that. <laughs> it, it's, it, it, it's about catering and, and fostering relationships with people. You Not know, for sure. And, and when, you, when you purchase a property, it's probably going to be the biggest, one of the biggest, if not the biggest investment that you'll make. For sure. So, you know, you need somebody who... Wait a second. Say that one more time. It's an investment, not a purchase. It's an yes, investment. Yes, it's an investment. That's, that's crucial. I feel like yes. people need to make sure they yes. get the distinction. Yes, yes, you yes. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be an investment, not Absolutely. just a purchase. Not just a purchase. That you're going to sit on, man. Don't sit on a liability forever, man. Find a way to make you some money off of when you purchase a home. A- a- absolutely. And we, and we can we can talk about it for Yeah, we days. can talk about it for days, for right? Days, for days. <laughs> we can get it to it for days. But yeah, like I was saying, it's, it's, one, it's one of the biggest investments you'll make in your life. So, you know, as a person that's gotten through the process, I feel like Sometimes I got to be vulnerable as well because, you know, they're in a vulnerable position. They don't really know what's going on. They're trusting me to kind of lead the way to point guard this whole thing. For sure. So at the same time, I have to make sure that we're all on the same page that that at the same time that I'm feeling vulnerable to them. And, yeah. you know, and it's 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 I, I like it. You know, I didn't originally get into it 
to be doing what I'm doing. Right. You know, I got into it. <laughs> that's how it goes, though. You never really, you never See, know what you get works. yourself into. You that's know how I mean? life works. That's kind of like this. This me starting this podcast, man. The whole thing is, like, I'm I'm really trying to turn this into an empire. Like, I don't want Absolutely. this to be like something that I'm just throwing on the internet. Like, this this is gonna be big. Like, I want this to change not just my life but the world. Like, for real, for real. Like, I need this to take care of people. Like, and it's not all about just the monetary value. It's it's also building a platform, being able to, you know, what I'm saying get 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 resource to certain places and be able to get, you know what I'm saying, the attention put on certain things that need to get paid attention to. Like, I want to be able to do all of that. Like, I want to turn this into not just a podcast, but into a vlogging channel, into a reactions channel, into a, a, a philanthropy channel where we're literally going to, like, impoverished communities and all over the world, not just in America, but I want to be able to use the funds from something like this and, and, and you know what I'm saying, working with different foundations, creating foundations. Like, I got this vision for a foundation that I want to start. But, um, that's that's going down. That that's that's gonna happen a little bit further down the line. The more and more I build, you know, what I'm saying my finances, because I always say you got to make sure you take care of yourself first financially Absolutely. before you're allowed to help other people. Absolutely. Yeah, because that that'll hold you back a lot. Like I, I trust me, I know about like. Helping people, I mean, it's a great, beautiful thing, and you absolutely should, to the best of your ability. But to the best of your ability, absolutely. don't let it hinder you. Don't let it hinder you and hold you back, because it's very easy to stunt your growth trying to help people. Trying to, yes, yes. You know what I'm saying it's like you can't pull somebody out the water if they drown, and if you're drowning, if you're too, drowning as well, <laughs> it don't make no sense. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, you know what I'm saying definitely help people, and and, and that's the direction I want to go with this eventually. But right now, we just you know what I'm saying building this foundation brick by brick. So and this is a start. And that's great, and you, and that whole spiel you did there, that's you said a lot of important things there. It's all, it all starts with a vision. Everything starts. Everything 100%. in the world starts in the mind. You know. Oh yeah, I'm everything, big on that. Ev- big on that. Everything starts in the mind. <laughs> big on that. Every, every idea, you know, even water bottle, phones, this table, that TV, flat right. screen TV. Somebody had an idea. No, literally, that's, that's all it was. It was, a, it was an idea, it was a vision. Like, I, I always tell people, like, uh, it's anything. People be like, yo, that's impossible. I'm like, bro, they put a man on the moon. Like, how, how can you say it's impossible? Like, there's, a, there's literally a flying school bus in the air called the airplane that you can put 300 people on, and it's flying. And you will get from here to California. That used to be like a six-month journey on foot. On foot and horseback, like how did they figure that out? Like for real, like you're not gonna tell Lewis me. and Clark. Yeah, Lewis and Clark, right? Second way, all that Pocahontas running through the brain maps, like even maps, bro. I'm always been so fascinated by little things geography. like the roadways, geography, everything. Like the, the who thought of this? Like who was like, yo, we need to draw a picture of this land so we can understand where it is how, and how to connect how to, it. Yes, and, and the I, terrain of the land. Right, oh, even all of that's important, right? Because there's plenty of land. I'll be looking all through, like, Sea Caucus and over here up on um, like I-95 and all that swamp land, and I'll be thinking, like, man, they didn't, figure out, they didn't figure out how to turn that into some high-rises already? Like, <laughs> in that prime real estate right next to American Dream Mall, right next to all these, right next to the airport, next to the MetLife Stadium. I'm like, oh, yo, yeah. there's so much land out there, and I'm like, bro, they got to figure this out because they're going to figure it out. Because eventually we're going to run it. There's going to be too many people on this planet. They're they, they going to need to make some more real estate. <laughs> that's that's a good point. I, I tell people all the time that you have to realize every, every year the population is growing. Every year. Every year the population is growing. So we only have a certain amount of land here. Oh, absolutely. So when, people, when I tell people about real estate and investing, at the end of the day, it's one of the safest investments you can make. Absolutely. Because as time goes... The land is only getting more and more valuable as the population grows. Right, the population is growing. The the, the income is growing. The average income is it grows every year. Inflation is always going to go up. So Absolutely, it, it, it makes sense, right? There's there's going to be there's always going to be more people, and there's never going to be more land. So of course, the price of that land is going to go up, and that's equity. That's that's something I I try to always ingrain in people's minds. Like that's where the investment is. Even if you're not buying a property to rent it out, like just building equity in the property by letting it sit. Is, is, is giving you leverage, right? Like I had a, I had purchased a home in Newark in 2017, October 4, 2017, on my brother's birthday. Shout out my brother Angel, he's running for senator right now. I throw that in there real quick. Yeah. Senator of New York yes, City, yes, at that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but, shout um, out Angel. Yeah, shout out, shout out Angel Vasquez. You know what I'm saying? You can look him up. But um, so on his birthday, yeah, I had I had finally the closing. I bought that house, and when I bought it, I had bought it for uh, 315,000. Uh, obviously not out of pocket. But that was the mortgage. Mm-hmm. Some people, I had to like let that let people know. Like I don't want you to think like, oh, people just coming out of pocket. Seven, seven thousand. No, but <laughs> so like uh, I had bought the property at three hundred fifteen plus another twenty five to fix it up a little bit. Um, the crackheads that ran in there stole all the copper pipes. Yeah, there, you know, yep, and stuff yep. like that. So I had to re put in all these pipes and stuff. Um, and then we we I, I took that property at three hundred forty thousand, and right now it's valued at over five hundred and eighty thousand, and it's only been four years. 
what I'm saying? So that's literally $240,000 worth of profit and just equity. And that right now, if I wanted to refinance, which is what I'm in the mm-hmm. process of, you know what I'm saying? We can, you can use that, re, you can refinance and take money out of that equity that you have. You know what I'm saying? That's You Absolutely. could probably explain a lot more to people. You know what I'm saying? That's like your, your world completely. Like I can get into it, but the, he can actually teach you when it comes to refinance and equity. You could go ahead and... Tap in and tell some people, you know what I'm saying, what refinancing is about. Well, you, you basically hit it right on the nose. So you refinance when the equity in your house is more than what you purchased for. And that's the difference that you can get right there to if you want to make any repairs for your homes, you want to take that money to do anything. Right. I, I tell people all the time that, as we were talking about, your home is investment. So what do you need to do with investment? You have to keep it up. Right. You need to, You should be making improvements every few years to your property For just sure. to make sure that it's at the top of the market mm. at all times. That makes it better. You know, it, it's an actual investment. That's what you have to treat it like. It's mm. it's an extension. It's not a business, but you got to treat it like you got to reinvest into a business. That's no, what you yeah. got to treat. That's what you got to treat the property like. Yeah, and ironically, I literally just got my, I just fixed up the, the, the level that I was living on because I had bought a multifamily in order to get some rental value and, and, and rent out the, the, the basement, which is a, uh, an apartment itself, and then the second floor, which is a whole separate apartment. So um, I had just redid the, uh, the, first, the first floor, like I said, and I'm about to rent it out. And, um, and, and in that, I, I tell people, like, when, you, when you're looking to get into a first property, don't look at buying a house as, like, something you want to live in for the next, at least not your first. Like, if you really want to build some, you want to build some fortune, like, you definitely want to get you some, something that you can rent out so that you're not going to be caught up in with the burden of having to pay that mortgage once Absolutely. you're ready to move out. Because ideally, do you really want to live somewhere for 20, 30 years? Like, you might want to, but that might put you in a stagnant position for your entire yes. life. Like, it's real easy to get comfortable and just sit very somewhere for, for 30, 40, 50 years. It's very easy. And it's, it's honestly, a lot of people, it's ideal for some people. Like, if that's how you want to live, then by all means. But if, you, if you're preaching progress and you're preaching about trying to do more and be a millionaire, you got to challenge yourself and go and the extra mile to go do something next. What's the next progressive step? Like, that was kind of the whole reason of me moving out of the house that I was living in because I was paying minimal I was paying minimal money to actually live there because the the, the tenants, which is my my best friends, they were living they're living there, and you know what I'm saying they were paying off the majority of the mortgage. So you you were comfortable. You were in a yeah, comfortable I was situation. I was in a comfortable situation yeah. for a little too long. You know what I'm saying the pandemic came. They 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 gave me some relief. I didn't have to pay the mortgage for a little bit. So I'm like you know I'm staying here. I'm gonna save some money. You know what I'm saying obviously I wasn't. You know what I'm saying we we uh. We eventually got through that, thank God, because the pandemic was it was ill. I, I didn't see that coming, but um, the pandemic also showed us a lot. Like it, 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 yes. it, it brought a lot of hustle out of people. Yes, it, it it showed us how quick the value of things can shoot up, can, bro. People, were, you can go outside and get you a, a drink for eight dollars before the pandemic. Now you can't go to the club and spend less than fourteen, fifteen dollars on a drink, and you got to leave tips. So that's a twenty dollar drink where people used to get the six dollar joints, give them ten, slide off, keep the four dollars, and it was cool. It's copacetic, but now it's like. Man, you can go anywhere. Like the, the price of everything is going. Everything up. gas right now, bro. Gas right now is on a whole other level. But like even cars, like cars. Oh, cars parks? are inflating in value, which yes. is unheard of. Like yes, we, that that doesn't. Ha- yes, that almost never happens. No. Like, I, I watched cars that were nineteen thousand la- two years ago. Now they're worth twenty four thousand. Since when does a car get older and cost more? Unless it's like a collectible. Yeah, unless you know it's like collectible. And even collectibles, like, nah, that won't happen. Like, these, these, it's, it's crazy the amount of things that the pandemic taught us. But, I mean, it's, it was definitely a blessing and a curse. It, I, I, I totally agree. I think another thing that the pand- pandemic taught us is the value of life, you know? Oh, yeah, it definitely, the value. It definitely put some perspective on oh, it. Oh, it put, it put some perspective on it for me and, and a lot of people, you know? Yeah. I, I know... You know, personally, I've seen I've seen it at its worst during the pandemic with right. people close to me and you know friends and extended family. For sure, man. Um, so, Rest in peace to everybody that yes, was on the pandemic. Yes, yes, seriously, that, seriously. That was that was that was, that was a dark moment. In life. but um, yeah, back to some positivity. I, just thought, <laughs> I don't even want to go in a negative direction. I don't believe in negativity, man. I don't dwell on negativity too long at all. Like we we. Listen, anything negative comes your way, man, give us give that about five minutes, wrap it up and keep it moving. Drown it out. Yeah, drown, drown it out. It out get with over it quick. Right. Don't don't dwell on it. Don't be in a sad mood. Don't be listening to extra sad music, that depressed music, because it, it it'll be that. So people don't realize, like, man, you you get into these moods and you feed it. Oh, oh it gets my so gosh, worse, bro. bro. It gets so worse, bro. I, I, oh, like, if you I going through something emotionally, that. bro, don't don't be listening to Fantasia and Keisha. <laughs> bro, pack that being up, your bro. Feelings, you going like, to be in your feelings, bro. That's just going to have you torn up, for real. It's only going to make it worse, but it's, it's like... It, legit. It's like we feed off that kind of... like We, we low-key feed off the... the 
uh, or feeding whatever mood we're whatever in. Whatever mood we're like, in. Like, we need that. You know what I mean? And music has such a big impact on us, man. Oh, like, subconsciously, too. Yeah, right. You don't even realize it, for real. That that That's exactly what it is, subconsciously. People don't... And I, I remember growing up, and they used to, like, say, oh, the rappers are the reason why people are doing all this violence and stuff. And I'd be like, what are y'all talking about? Like, that don't even make no sense. But I was a kid. I was so young. I'm 8, 9, 10 years old listening to Eminem talking about killing his mom. I didn't think nothing of it. You feel me? I mean, that's a joke. I, I, I would never think nothing of that. But then you go up and the reality is people really are like listening to like drill music and stuff like this. And they, they run with it. And that energy is so negative so and different. dark. Like people don't even realize they're turning themselves into goons. Like especially like we're from the suburbs, like for the most part. Like and, and don't get me wrong, the suburbs does not mean that it's all sweet. Cause listen, I knew yes. plenty I knew plenty of people on section eight <laughs> in the suburbs, all for it. No, like, yeah. People absolutely. struggling, people going absolutely. through it, people whose parents was literally drug addicts. Like it, it's it gets real in the suburbs. Like not not for nothing. But um I say all that to say, uh Damn, I just drew a blank. Where was I going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just drew a whole blank. My head just went out the way. So, um just just to just to go back what we were talking about before about the positivity. Oh, right, 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 and right, right. Not oh, dwelling right, on the, the negative. Right, right, right. Okay. Um I can That's attest to this by being a real estate agent. There's a lot of up and downs. There's a lot of up and downs. I've 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 had to learn to stay even keeled throughout the whole process, you know? Okay. You can't get too high. You can't get too low. You know, oh, my offer got accepted. I used to jump through the roof. Right. Oh, um, deal fell through during home inspection. You know, that's that's Trust a real me. low. So been through that. Or <laughs> I've been through that. Or you can't get too high when you get these these commission checks because you go out and spend something. Go ball out. Go or ball. you can't get too low when you don't get a listing or you lose out on a bidding war, and then your mind festers and dwells on that, yeah. and then. Then and you can go a long time without seeing a yes, check all of a sudden. Yes, and I've been through all of that, bro. Yeah, I've been through all of that. Like I've had, said. bro, bro, your mind is your biggest obstacle sometimes, bro. No, I've sure, been through literally. all of that, through yeah. ups and downs. So now I, I just stay even keeled throughout the whole process. Mm -hmm. And I realize, you know, everything happens for a reason. And I just come and roll with the punches. It's part, that's no, part of sure. it. That's part of it. I just realized where I was going with the whole talking about see? being from the suburbs. Glad, see? <laughs> all right, so now I, I remember. Time to collect your so what I was going with is, uh, all right, so being from the suburbs, like I watch people who grew up in not necessarily the worst positions, but they're, they they listen to this type of music. And all of a sudden, yes. they're trying to be in a gang. And all of a sudden, they're riding on with guns. And now they got murder charges. Like, And it's real. Like, Legit. Like, no. I, I know a couple people. Like, it, it, It's actually really sad because it's like, yo, you were a good kid. You weren't even, and, yeah. Yeah. And now, I'm, I don't want to say not like that because at the end of the day, I, no, man, I, didn't, I didn't mean like that, but you know what I, I mean. I didn't even see that, but I didn't even see if you said the whole thing, but I, you know me, I'm always like 10 steps ahead and I be cutting people off, my bad. <laughs> nah, that's cool, that's cool. I don't want to say people aren't like that because it don't matter where you're from, man. You could be like that. You can wake up one day and be pussy the next day, you could be the toughest nigga alive, man. Or, or you could wake up one day and, and be scary the next day, you got a gun in hand, you might shoot somebody. Now you a killer. So at the end of the day, man, you can't tell somebody, oh, they're not like that, they're not like this. It can be like that. It can, it can get like that real quick. And the music know. and all that negativity is what I'm saying. That that leads you down that path without you even realizing it real quick. So it's because, like, when you're real young, especially high school, like, what gets the attention is that negativity. Like, the bad kid, the kid that's getting arrested, yes. the kid that gets suspended, he's cursing at the teachers, the kid that's that the gets one. in fights. He's that nigga. He's the, yo. Like, whoa. everybody want to be like, all the girls whoa. like yeah, him. Yeah, all the girls love right? him. He lost his virginity at 12, whoa. 13. What? He's all an icon. All the girls love him. For what? real. Like, that's how it really be when you a kid, for real. So, like, it's easy to get caught up in that. And then you you don't even realize you'll be 19, 20 still, still moving like that. Cause you think that's that school, mindset. right? You on Instagram flashing guns and stuff, and it's like, yo, bro, you, like, you're from Lowdown, New Jersey. Like, yeah. What are you doing? Like, you, you're from a nice place. Like, you don't got to be like that. Come on, but, bro. You, you, a, you a grown man. But bro. you all the way like that. I know motherfuckers that was leaving the suburbs to go to fucking Patterson in New York to gangbang for real. Like, it, it, it gets real. So like, you can't tell them they not like some of the toughest people I know too are born and raised in the suburbs. Like, the like motherfuckers just like to fight. <laughs> like, motherfuckers just like to do bad shit. Like, some of the worst people I could think of for real. Like. So I, I just don't, I, I just want to give like a, a warning to people like man don't get be careful what you're listening to and how much you're feeding into and, it and and attaching yourself to and making that your reality because it's one thing to be able to listen to it yes and it's one thing to, and, be able and to detach, detach yourself detach yourself right. from it and you've always been great at that the, and the problem is the problem is um, you got to look at stuff for what it is it's entertainment right? right so when I watch a horror movie I'm not gonna emulate but sometimes we get so caught up when right. when it comes to music right. We we miss step entertainment with education. No, for sure. You got to get your education from somewhere, right. no matter what. Yeah, you're gonna get your education from somewhere. 
But can you detach, listen to that type of stuff, and still getting your education where it needs to be? Or are you going to let that music no, influence yeah, 100%. your everyday, daily habits, your life? Right. And so that's what you really, it's, it's about detaching and realizing that that's entertainment. Those are right. entertainers. Right. You know? And see, that's the thing. That's you, the thing. You've always been so good at that, man. Because I've always given you, <laughs> I've always bid you up on this, like the, the versatility, the way that you you can literally, you were in all honors, all AP classes, <laughs> literally, since like the fourth grade. I'm in a missile tools class in fourth grade, you take out the math test. This motherfucker <laughs> scored like some, he scored like college Yo, level fucking results at 10 years old. That's tough. So, yeah, I ain't forget Miss yes, O'Toole. Shout yes. out Miss O'Toole. I hope she's doing good. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I hope, shout out to her family. T that New Jersey. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I remember, like, you were always, you were a math whiz slash star athlete, and and you were you were super respectful, never got in trouble. I don't even, you never probably even been suspended. Like, nothing, like, I don't remember you ever really getting in serious I never, trouble. I never really got suspended. Any serious trouble you ever got. Like, we got arrested for the first time together, man. Yeah, fact. yeah. some bullshit. Yeah, we're being outside bullshit. too late. Yeah, like, bullshit. 13 years old, yeah. we were outside at, like, 2 in the morning that's after a party. For nothing. For nothing. But, I mean, not for now, we was outside. Like, that was, that was our <laughs> shit. It doesn't stop us being outside. outside. But, like so I'm saying, union. you you can, you can you were that way in, in class. You you were, like, the super smart, respectful kid. And then, outside of the class, <laughs> bro, this motherfucker's no fucking ignorant. <laughs> right, yeah, I know it or not. When I tell you this, all this thing to listen to is Gucci Mane back in the day. Till to this day, Gucci Soldier. We was listening to the most Yo, ignorant all shit, bro. All day, every day. Like if bro, you see, like he was two different people, and it's funny now because he's like that to this day. Because he's this real estate agent, and you see him, and it's like young black man, dreadlocks. You know what I'm saying? You 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 almost want to put him in, in one direction, but as soon as he opens his mouth, you know he's an educated, smart motherfucker. Like this this motherfucker knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. He's a businessman at the end of the day. But if you know him, know him, then you know like this, <laughs> yeah. this nigga's a joke. Like he's hilarious. Like. He, he, he could he could just um he could be so versatile, but he always detached himself. He never went, you never went into those like in, into the, you never got into trying to gang bang or do nothing like that, like, or, or anything violent or trying to sell drugs, nothing like that. Like you were you were good enough, you were smart enough to detach yourself. And like I know me for instance, I, I wasn't like I was I wasn't into like no gang. No, like but, yeah. but at one point shit, we didn't made a gang like because no, we thought legit, it was cool. Legit, like, legit, 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 legit made a gang in middle school. We, right in middle school, got pictures on my MySpace throwing up gang signs that wasn't even real. It like, wasn't even real. Right doing. Dumb shit. So like, I know what it's like to be misled and completely think that that shit Absolutely. is cool. Absolutely. You know oh saying? my gosh. I, I I I know exactly what that's like. So you got to be careful uh, in attaching yourself to these things, man. Especially yes. like since the rise of stuff like Chief Keith and all that. Like, man, this shit done got violent. Like. People are, they, they, they're promoting extreme drugs. Like, I remember when Wiz came out talking about smoking weed, man, that shit was, that shit was absurd to people. What? They were like, oh my oh God. Oh my God. Right. Now, these motherfuckers, he's 16, talking about they popping perks, popping mollies. All and I'm that. like, yo, bro, no wonder they outside killing shit. These Pop niggas is geek. The, uh, these little niggas is fiend out. Le legit. I just seen some little nigga on, on, on YouTube. I don't want to shout him out because I, I don't want to put in a negative light, but yeah. like, he's literally like 17 Lighting in the Bronx down. and he's running around popping two, three perks before the vid on vid. Like on camera popping two, three packs, and I'm like, yeah, no shit, he's gonna really go shoot somebody. Yeah. He's itching he's different. right now. He's, yeah, right? Like, biting you know how, down. You know how aggressive that, like that, that type of drug makes you. know what I'm saying, like, people don't realize they, 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 they doing these drugs and they're putting themselves in these, in, in these. In the like they're listening to these uh, songs that are putting them in his mind frame, and it's it's developing a whole bad character that they really don't want, mm -hmm. but they don't even realize it. And it, they don't it, hit them till it, they, it's, they it's, 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 well, it's yeah. been it's been festering in, and then right. like, boom, that right. person comes out. Yeah, man, it shit, it shit can be really sad, man. So and and. I always want to tell people like, man, don't be afraid to change. Don't, don't, don't be afraid to yes. flip it when because I, I done seen some of the coldest gangsters turn to fucking poets. Like, yes. some of the coldest yes. gangsters turn to professors, don't. turn, turn to, to police officers. I know a motherfucker that literally had to, had to stab a nigga in his thigh. <laughs> no bullshit. He told me this story. Shout out my son. I can't name him because he's still a police officer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but literally, bro, he literally was 13. I think he told me at the time, and, and you know him too. Because matter of fact, we almost got killed fucking with these, these motherfuckers in on Bogota one time. And, and I, if I tell you Bogota. I, 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 there's only one more fucking yes. thing to eyes. So you know we're going to jail. That time at that party. Yes, well, the know. time at that yes, party. Yes. We keep it at that. Yeah, we keep it at that. So... Yeah. <laughs> so that motherfucker right there, my my, Yo, my, my man's what? Uh, he, uh, I didn't know he was a police officer. Yeah, he's a police. He's an NYPD officer. Cool dude though. Like it, it's crazy because if you meet him now, you would never. You think would never. That. You, you never, would never oh know he was putting in work. Like he was 13 years old. He, he literally had to get initiated by stabbing a nigga in the leg. 13. He didn't want to do. He didn't even know the dude. They literally just sent him out there on some crash test dummy shit. Like, yo, we got this little nigga that's trying to be down. Cool. Send him out there to see what he's about. Feel me? And he really ran and stabbed a nigga in the leg. Like, what? Now he's a cop. Now, you would never think that, you, no. that he was like that previously. And it's like, man, you don't That's know so who cute. you be talking to. You don't know. You, you never know. know. But it, it, it's more important for me to say, like, don't be afraid to change, man. Because I can only imagine what type of steps he had to take to be like, yo, I'm going to be a cop. 
Like, he was literally a gangbanger to you, to you, you know what I'm saying, into your teenage years. And, and then he had a child or whatever, and his whole mind started changing. And it's like, man, fuck what these people think. I got to take care of my family. I yes. got to take care of myself. Yes. So don't be scared to change for the better. Don't right? be scared of growth. Don't be scared of growth. I don't know. And that's the, the, the Free Gems podcast. The whole name is really because I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to give people, you know what I'm saying? Well, Free Gems is what it sounds like. Uh, you know, free uh, ideas and, and free, uh, what's the word? Um, just... Trying to ch- trying to give you as much positive things and as much things that you can like run with and use in your own life. I want to make this relatable in so many aspects. I want to be I want everybody from any walk of life to be able to listen to this and pick something up from it. You know what I mean? I don't want to just be talking to the hood motherfuckers. I don't want to be talking to the suburbs. I don't want to just be talking to the, to men or just women. Or, you know what I'm saying? I want to talk to everybody. Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? So it, something it, everyone can take away from. Right. That's why we want to, we want we want to talk about a lot of financial literacy and stuff like that because everybody can use that. You know everybody. Everybody has money, right? Yeah. Everybody. Well, shit. We got you better. Have some money. Uh, <laughs> every, have some every, money. Everybody, so everybody has to learn about financial literacy. No, nah, for sure, man. It's, it's 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 important to to make sure you got your finances right because life will hit you quick. And you were talking about this yesterday when you were telling me um how the average person is three paychecks away from being homeless, from being broke, from being oh, from being, being broke, from being, being broke, homeless, being, 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 yeah, shit, being behind, you about to be behind. about to be homeless. Yes, so. yes, <laughs> they, they go hand in hand for sure. So it, it, it's important, man. People get their finances right. It's like. All right, for example, like what 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 advice would you give somebody that's like fresh out of high school that's trying to get their shit together? Like, uh, I, I would I would tell somebody fresh out of high school. I would just tell them to. That's a great question. I would tell them to <laughs> just, you know, do whatever you want to do. You know, you're young at the time. You know, you're gonna make mistakes in life. You're you're a young adult trying. Well. Still a kid, but no, you're still a kid. You're for sure. you're you're transitioning to to just go out there and. Do do as much as you want to do to the point where you know is this what I want to do or not. Do everything. Uh, yeah, thank you. Do everything. Boom. Hit do that on everything. The head. Don't be afraid. Yes. Don't, don't be, be afraid, afraid, man. Don't, don't be, be afraid, afraid to make I, mistakes. Yeah, I get clients all the time who come in to, to to get tattoos or whatever, and they tell me like, man, I've been thinking about getting tattoos. I mean, uh, about starting to do tattoos, and my initial response is always, yo, do it. Yo, buy the equipment. I send you the website. Funny? Whatever you need, yo. hit me. It's, I'm trying to do that for you. Like, I, I'm all the way there yes, to always help people listen. because it's like, yo, th- shit like this changed my life. Yes, So it's yes. like, why wouldn't I want that to help you? And you can test it out. See if you like it or not. You know what I'm saying? You know how many people tell me, uh, oh, I'm thinking about getting my real estate license. I spoke to somebody that wasn't yesterday the day before. I, I help people all the time do right. it because the thing about it is, is you got to realize there's enough money out here for everybody. Absolutely. There's enough money out here for everybody. everybody. So it doesn't matter what everyone else is doing. Mm-hmm. If you're doing what you need to be doing, you're gonna make it. 100. It doesn't matter what it is. It's oh, a lot of people are doing that. I don't. I don't. I want to do that, but a lot of people are doing it. Right. Stop worrying about what others are doing. 100%. You're worried about. You're looking around instead of putting your head down and doing what you need to do. Yeah. If you 100%. do what you need to do, you will. You will do it. You mm-hmm. will be successful. So I don't care. I, people ask me all the time. Oh, I'm trying to get in real estate. You know. I don't look at them as competition. That's great for you. I'm, I'm happy for I you. Don't I don't look at them I don't look as, competition. as competition at all. That is so important. Not at all. Everybody There's is not competition, for everybody. Bro. No. <laughs> People are not. You're, you're in your own competition. You're exactly. In your, own race. your only challenge. Your, your only challenge is to be better than the person you were yesterday. Exactly. Like that's all you can really try to be. I don't. I, I can't try to be better than you. No. You can't be try to be better than me. It, it's not gonna work like no, that. No. Also, life is so much about perspective. It's like who's saying you're better than who says you're better. Who said? Who said? Exactly. It's all about perspective anyway. Like you could you could be in this million dollar mansion, a million dollar condo. And you think you're the shit, and it's like, okay, I I, I know motherfuckers who were homeless on purpose. Like I know people that live shelter to shelter on purpose. Like for it was this couple in Queens. I used to work in Queens from like eighth grade to my junior year, well senior year when I started this whole the business holding the conversation. But um, and this couple, they used to live, uh, they used to live. Uh, what's the word? Uh, when you live in a, a foster, not a foster home, um, uh, shelter. A shelter, right? right mm-hmm. I just said the word. Um, so <laughs> they, they used to live in a shelter, and they used to wash windows for like a living. And I used to look at them like they were crackheads. Like I'd be like, yo, what are y'all doing? Like y'all on some fiend shit? Like I didn't say that out loud. But obviously. you were being I'm mind, like 14, 15. That, yeah. Like yo, why they outside busting their ass, washing these windows with newspaper that they look like they stole off somebody's front lawn, and. Then it hit me. My mom tells me one time, she's like, they're not fiends. They're not on drugs. I'm like, what you mean? She like, they choose to live like that. And it shit fucked me up because I'm like 14 years old. Like, how can you choose to live like that? And it was like, yo, think about it. You don't got no responsibilities. You don't got no kids. You don't got no bills. You don't got to do nothing. They're making enough money to do whatever the fuck they want on a daily basis and have no overhead fees besides, do we want to shower today? We'll check into the shelter or not. And yeah, that's how they live their life. And if that's what makes you happy. And that's what makes you happy. Then if that's what makes you happy, then I, I can't say that I'm living a better life. Nobody can living, tell you they're not you know, successful. You can't tell them they're not successful. Yeah, because then this success is really like, are you happy? 
Are you happy? Because if you're not happy, then what is success for real? Like, and and it, people try to box themselves. Oh, that's this person's lane. Oh, no, that's what they do. No, no. If that's what you want to do, then that's why I would tell somebody at 18. If you want to do something, do it. Do it. Do it. 100% do it. Do it. As long as you're not hurting yourself or nobody. Absolutely. Do it. Jump do into it. it. I don't give a fuck if it, I'm not going to tell people to do something illegal. <laughs> I was, for real, I don't care if it's legal or illegal because at the end of the day, bro, you got to learn. Like, you got to take these L's in life. And L is not a loss. It's a, it's a lesson. It's a lesson. It. So it's like you 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 got to take the L sometimes. Like, even if it does lead you into jail. Because, bro, I know so many people that, that jailed and saved their life for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they were strung out, bugging out, popping Percocets and all that. Now that stuff like fentanyl is involved in the streets, them motherfuckers would have been perkheads through this fentanyl phase. They, they, might, not be, they might not be here. 100%. They would have crashed that. And did some dumber shit than what they originally did, and actually, I actually want to um I want to bring in a couple of friends and associates, people that I that I that I know that and that did some real jail time, real young. Like I got a partner of mine that did you you know Jamal, but uh, he didn't did nine years, ten mm-hmm. years if I'm not mistaken. He did ten years basically straight. He came out for like three months, fucked up on parole, came, went right back in. You know what I'm saying? But I know they have so many gems and like stories that people need to hear, that the youth needs to see because at the end of the day, like some people they catch these cases at 16, 17, 18, and they think their life is over because they. About to go do two, three years. So it's like, man, go talk to a nigga that just did nine, ten. That's twenty. That's only twenty six, maybe. Well, yeah. Like, go, go talk to him. And you know what I'm saying? It'll give you a different perspective. It'll let you know your life's not over, bro. You, you, you got your whole life ahead of you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, just if you got to take that L and, and go learn some shit, man, go learn some shit. But you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't do what you want. Do what you want. Figure it out. Absolutely. Figure it fig, out. Fig, definitely figure it out. And yeah. at the end of the day, nobody can write your story for you. Right. And ideally, nothing, nothing illegal. Nothing. nothing yes. Illegal. Yes, ideally. But, but I understand that's that. It's just the reality <laughs> of where we live in, man. Yeah, man, you're reality right. Reality is crucial. Even though reality is what you make it. And the the day. and a lot of times people will they'll do things because other people say to do it and they won't really follow their own advice or oh, they'll do they'll do stuff because oh you're good at this that's the majority you're of people in that. college like oh, they, they, because their parents told them like yeah. plain and simple yeah absolutely and like, and like that's cool if you're trying to appease to your parents but you're gonna hate yourself for it like you're, you're gonna be mad at if you if you really don't feel it in your heart that you want to be in college or anything like that bro it's and like being don't, don't yeah and being in debt and like not i'm not saying anything bad with college or trying to undermine college because i actually think graduating is one of the like it's i think it's it's, it's like a it's, it's an accomplishment it, in no, itself it's, it's a it's a, a very big accomplishment it's definitely something that should be a and we don't think we applaud people enough and I, it's ironic because I'm saying with the only, probably the only friend that I have that has a degree and I, and I could always commend you on that too no, people, see, people that. don't know that as a college graduate like yeah, he, 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 he's a, I'm telling you he's a genius <laughs> like went to school you know what I'm saying free all that kind of situation so it's like he, he had the game figured out but it's because your parents did a hell of a job I, I, bro, you, I always say that shit bro there's a reason why I made you my son's godfather like for real for real yeah, it's because the, 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 I seen the moral and the way that you've been raised and the things that you do and don't do and I'm like, that has to be your parents. Like, you don't live outside your means at all, bro. You, I know you got the bag, but I, I ain't <laughs> never seen you wear over a hundred, two hundred dollar pair of jeans. Like, it's just not your style. Maybe in the true religion era when we were kids, yeah, back shit. in the day, but, man, that, that, but that after was... that, never lived outside your means, bro. Like you, but you, were, and you always had money. Like I used to literally run to you and borrow two, three dollars nah, from you l- in, yo, every day in school. Bro. Like I don't know if you remember that, but no, I used to, y'all borrow a dollar, two dollars, literally, so literally. I get the chicken finger and fries from Maggie's. Shout out to Maggie's and T. Maggie's and T. Oh my god, shout out to Maggie's. Go get you some soul food from Maggie's and T. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the old family, my son Shaq and all them, Kalia, everybody, Davon. You know what I'm saying? But um, I used to borrow the dollar, the dollar no. from you to get the chicken, one chicken tender with the fries. And then what was crazy is my pops, man, he used to always tell me like, um, you never want to owe a man money. Always, oh, if you owe somebody money, get them handled first, and then worry about you. Like even if it's your last dollar, but you told me you're gonna pay him back by this day, your word is your bond. Make sure you pay them back. So that's why, like, I always make sure. I told you I'm gonna pay you back tomorrow. I'm gonna get you that no dollar debt, tomorrow, bro. even if I gotta borrow from my dad. You feel me? But I'm gonna get you your dollar, you because I can borrow from him. I don't gotta pay that nigga back. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> no, no, no. I no. I actually remember. Wow, I, wow. So now you're bringing I, it back. I wow. say I say that to say though, like yeah, the, that I, I wanted you to be my son, Godfather, because if anything happens, I know that you would raise him. Right, because I like ideally I would want him to I would want him to come up the way you came up, where it's like, bro, you your morals is just there, bro. Like, oh, I ain't never you, seen you do no wrong. Not saying that you're a perfect human. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's, that's of what course. I'm starting to say. You feel me? Of I'm course. not there every day, every second of your life. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's a whole different conversation. You know what I'm saying? Because only you really know you. But 
that can get real deep. You want to start talking about it because then that'll lead into religion and all yeah, that shit. Yeah. I, I don't even want to touch on that yet. We not, we not touching that. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> not yet. I don't want to get canceled for this episode, you know what I mean? Because it could get there. Right, we, can, we can start getting real, real deep oh, in these conversations. Man. I got to get my boy Joe on here. If I get Joe out here, bro, and y'all listen to this, the way this motherfucker speaks, bro, because, yo, shout out to Joe Tats. Listen, I, I got to give a big shout out to Joe Tats, man. Shout out Joe Tats, That's, Tats. that's my Absolutely. younger brother. You got to understand, bro. Absolutely. This nigga is three, four years younger than me, and to this day, bro, I learned something from this nigga almost every time he talked to me. If we have a conversation longer than five minutes with any substance, it's gonna, it's gonna, it can fuck around and change the entire way I think. And there's a lot of things that I've been doing like my whole life that I didn't even realize, and like manifesting and and and, and speaking things to his. I was doing that shit since a younger. And you don't and even realize, it, right? And it wasn't until my was like Joe came around and was like, "Yo, you have to do this. Like, you have to completely cancel out everything negative that you think." And, and obviously, that's not, that's not, not, you're not gonna naturally be able to just cancel out. Absolutely, a negative thing's gonna hurt. Boom, you hit your foot. You can't cancel it out. It hurt real quick. Let's dwell on that. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna dwell. Wrap it up. Have your pity party. Right. Have your pity party. We good. Wash your but, hands and keep um, going. Yeah, well, I gotta get Joe on the show so y'all can really hear this. This nigga is like a fucker. I call him Doctor Joe Google. You know what I'm saying? Because this nigga, I don't know what he be on some Doctor Sebi plant based. Nah, he, really he he be he on really some do. shit though, he but for really real, he, he's super woke. But he could be controversial, which is also why I need him on. Like, I need, <laughs> I need him to ruffle, ruffle some feathers. You know what I mean? But um, I, when I speak about like manifesting shit and speaking shit to existence, like uh, down to a fact, one of the things that I noticed when I was young, I'm talking about like middle school, elementary school. Like, even when I was playing, like, video games, right? And, like, I would be stuck on a level. Like, I'm playing Mortal Kombat or some shit. And I just can't fucking win. I cannot win. And it's getting me mad. To the point where I'm about ready to break this fucking controller. <laughs> Sometimes what'll happen is I, I, I literally be like, nah, I'm going to do it. Like, this, I, I'm going to get it this time. I'm going to get it this time. I'm gonna get it. And, and I would still be failing. And then somehow, I somehow get it. Like, Lots. and all I did was literally speak it out loud and be so f- laser focused on this shit and, like, just keep reiterating and saying it and saying it and somehow I would eventually get it. Like, granted, I'm just getting better at whatever I'm doing. Yeah, because like, you keep failing. Because I keep failing. It's exactly. a microcosm of life. Damn, that, microcosm. That, that, that's a great word. That, that is. <laughs> this motherfucker's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> microcosm. I'm using that whole week, nigga. Yo. No, seriously, I, that, that's a microcosm of life right there. Nah, word, bro. Failing over and over again and learning from your failures. Okay, boom. Maybe I'm going against this boss. Okay, now I can't do that. Okay. Oh, he killed me now. I can't do that. Yeah, Oh, exactly. oh this is working. This is working. Oh, I should have done this earlier. Right. Let me go back and yeah. figuring it out. And, figuring that, it and out. that goes into executing. You got to execute. You can't just be manifesting a dream. Yes. If you, oh, my, yes. If you yes. got a plan. Man, but you're not putting no effort into it, man. You it, listen, it, man. It's, it's a pipe dream. It's a pipe dream. It's exactly. a pipe dream. It don't really mean nothing. But that's exactly why we're here. <laughs> it all goes full circle, man. There's a there's a there's a general topic I like to talk about. Not not topic, but like there's a general uh, way of life I like to think like where everything goes full circle, man. Like uh, everything. It all it all, it really does. It it it, it, re, it it really does. Even when you don't even realize it. Right. Like I remember me and, me and my brother when we uh for, well my parents first came to America. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you know what I'm saying. Shout out to my parents. You know what I'm saying? I come yes, from immigrant big, parents. Yes. Big um, shout out. I'm the only one that was born here out of my. Family. But like my second parents, I, right? Exactly. <laughs> so my um my brother came in. He was four years old. So he was born in DR, with Dominican Republic. For those who don't know, um when they came over here, we uh, we originally landed on like 155th Street, then uh between on Amsterdam Avenue, and then we ended up on 161st where they really settled that after they got their shit together. Well, they didn't really get their shit together. My dad was working two jobs. He was a taxi driver slash factory worker, and um my mom couldn't work yet because she she had a whole different situation where she wasn't even really supposed to be. It was it was a lot going on. I'm not gonna lie, you know what I'm saying. We went through that whole phase where like she had to marry uh, an American to get her citizenship to let me like let us stay, or a bunch of shit. So um, you didn't even tell me, that. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, that's why to this day, like my mom doesn't even have my my dad's last name, but they married. They married in DR though. So in America, she ended up having to marry some Puerto Rican nigga with a ponytail, and somehow I'm like, yo, who? <laughs> I'm like, I, I remember seeing, I remember seeing, yo, I was seeing baby pics of this shit not too long, probably like like 2017. I'm looking through this photo album, and I'm like. Yo, my who? <laughs> I'm like, who? Who's the, who, who's the Puerto Rican nigga with the ponytail? Like, what's this about? Like, he's literally holding me. I, I'm on his arms and she kissing me on my head. I'm like, who is this nigga? Feel me? Who is this nigga? <laughs> who, who is, is this, this nigga? nigga? So then she had to straight break it down to me. Like, yo, this is what a this is where this last name come from. And I'm like, it always mind fucked me too. Yo, I never. That yeah, makes sense yeah. now. You, now you, right, right, right. I'm a Vasquez. Her name is Martinez. Martinez is more of a Puerto Rican last name, to be to be told. Like it, it, it goes through all the islands. All the islands. Yeah, it's all the same. But um, yeah, that that came through there. And going back to life going full circle. See, I could ramble on forever. It's kind of why I had to do this podcast. But um, going on to what I was saying is when they when they finally landed, uh, we ended up on 161st between Amsterdam and Broadway. Me and my brother went to uh, PS4 Public School for. I was out of there by the time I was in. I was going into second grade by the time we were teenagers. That's why I never rep New York like that. Even though I got it tatted on me, but that's for a plethora of other reasons. <laughs> um, but um, so 
we lived there. My brother did up to seventh grade, and then we moved to we moved to Jersey. Cool. And then he ended up going to college. It, motherfucker went to Cornell. My brother's a whole different superhero. Yeah, yeah, I, can, yeah. I, I, really? I, I, can, I can spend an hour talking about just the shit he's accomplished. But I, um, so he ended up going to Jersey, going to college in, in New York, then going to college. I mean, then teaching in Colorado for a couple years, then going to motherfucking, um, then going to co- back to college at Columbia University. And then from there, he ended up Ivy moving. League. Ivy League. Oh, yeah. He went from Cornell University Straight to Ivy Columbia. Yeah, he's, he's different. So, <laughs> um, yeah, the motherfucker's different. The nigga was flying airplanes at 16. No bullshit. He has his pilot license at 16. I remember that. That's I remember that. The motherfucker was speaking three languages in the seventh grade. But anyway. <laughs> so uh, I say all this to say when he moved back and came back to Columbia University, he ended up moving to an apartment on 160th, which is directly across the street from PS4. And it just so happened that he and his, the job he ended up landing after a couple of years he was working with like the government government in New York City, but then he ended up landing as the 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 leader for the budget of the teachers union in New York City. And it's like what are the fucking odds? Twenty years later, after going through all these tra- after going through all these different, you know, what I'm saying aspects, avenues, and avenues of life, right? You end up parked up right in across front of, the street, across the street from the entrance of school. the elementary school that we started off. You know, what I'm saying that we were at over twenty years ago. So like that, that shit right there. Let me see, like, oh, this life going full circle shit is real. Yeah, like, yo, for real, that's for real. real. That's full circle for real, for real. Yeah, bro, it, it's 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 amazing to be honest, and it's even crazy because I remember growing up, my dad used to tell me like his dream would have been to be a politician in DR though. He wanted to be like the president. Of Dominican Republic, you know what I'm saying? So it's like now seeing my brother turning into a politician, like running for senator, it's like, damn, bro. Yeah. It, like, yo, you know what's funny to me? You you always told me that he, that's what he wanted. He, he wanted just, to be a politician. Yeah. And I, so I was like, yo. <laughs> it's, it's fucking wicked, bro. Yo. I, I, I love it. Cause it's, I love it. Because my brother didn't grow up speaking. He wanted to be a politician. That's not what he wanted at, fir- at first. like, But if you ask me my fondest memory, I remember him always saying, like, man, I want to be an investment banker. And I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm like, why the fuck? How you, how you start to stand at that high, my yeah. nigga? What happened to firefighter? Yeah, Can, what's we, going can on? we go for firefighter? Like, Damn. This nigga said, I want to. Right. Can we do something, you know what I'm saying? The regular? <laughs> It's like I said, an investment banker. I'm like, all right. So I had to up it. So since day one, I was telling him, I just want to be a business mogul, business mogul. I was saying that shit since young as day. I'm like, I just want to be a businessman. That's what I want to be known for. That's why, like, to this day, I always mention, like, when I tell people, like, yeah, I do tattoos, I, it's, like, the last thing I, I like to mention. I mentioned on here first because that's what the, the majority that's of my following know knows me for. Right? Yes. Almost all of my following would know me for. But it's like, I want to detach myself from that. I don't want to be known as a one-trick pony. Like, Absolutely. I, I can't be known as the dude who just does tattoos. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want to be a business business mogul at the end of the day like when you see me I want you to see a bunch of different businesses I don't want you to think like oh it's a dude that does tattoos you're, like that's all we're going to talk about you're a connector that's what it is and right. tattoos was your avenue Ta- tattoos 100%. tattoos was your first breakthrough of connecting but you're a connector 100% no, I, I, it, it's important to say an avenue like I tell people you need to find something that'll get you, to, get you money where you can start to stack it and build something and then start developing a way to get a second stream of income. Branch, that's start when, branching That's off. when shit has started changing for real, for real. Especially if you're going through any process where, like, uh, like people moving out for the first time. Like, if you're moving into your first, like, apartment, it's super, super important that if you're going to tack on a big bill like that or even, like, getting the vehicle, like, getting your first car, which normally comes before you get your first apartment, you got to make sure you add an extra, uh, another stream of revenue because if not, you'll find exactly. yourself in a red real quick. In real quick. Either, either find you another stream of revenue or adjust your lifestyle. Uh, and you don't want to adjust your lifestyle. You still want to shop where you shop. You want to you want to do your makeup when you want to do your makeup. You, you still want to spend the money the way you spend the money, but it's like, yo, bro, you got a, you got a $1,500 bill over your head now like every month that got to get paid. That has to get paid. So you got to do something to add up or, or it'll real real quickly it'll chip into your into your pockets. And, and, that's, and that's when the financial literacy comes in, money management. Right, and you know? some people think like, "Oh, I got this. I got this five thousand save or ten thousand save. I can move out because worst case scenario, I can I can pay off the next couple months of rent with my savings." You never want to be paying your rent from your savings. Never. Like, unless you're, you should have a rental savings aside from your actual save, and that rental savings obviously regenerates every month because you spend it every month. You spend that, and that has some that has nothing to do with you know what I'm saying the the actual money that you're saving. Because if you're living off your savings, bro, you're gonna find yourself in a red real quick, like real real quick. But um. It, that and that and that's why financial literacy is important. It's you know, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. You you, you could be making Damn, bro. This motherfucker. Yeah, can we get some good this, 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 this really, this motherfucker. It's not how much you make, it's how you much you keep. You just be rattling this shit off the top of the head. You see what I'm talking about, bro? It, it's not about what you make, it's what you can keep. No yeah. bullshit. You know, it, 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 you, you think think about this scenario. Think about you um you know, you're in a business you're in a businessman, you get your first big promotion. First big promotion, first first big six figure promotion. Guess what? 
Now you gotta look the part. Mm. Now you now you change from your starter home, you get a home that's six hundred fifty thousand. Now you change exactly. your regular watch, you gotta get a better watch. Right. You gotta get better suits. You mm-hmm. gotta get a better car. Mm-hmm. So when you, if you think about it, the breakdown of what you're taking in, are you really taking in any more money? Now that you upgraded your lifestyle, you're not. No, exactly. No, Damn. it's not about what you make; it's about what you keep. You're not lying, bro. It's, that's a fact. At, at the end of the day, when you look at this, when you look at the Damn. the bottom line, are you really making more money? Right. Or, or are you or are you just really collecting more debt? Damn. No, for real. It, I, I, right. We need a bell on that. <laughs> I, I do. I do say it to people too. It's like, man, you 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 start adjusting your lifestyle and. You you don't even realize because you're running into a bigger bag and that shit can be the, the that can yes. be the biggest downfall for you too. Yes, because it's your first time getting a bag. I always tell people, man, when you when you start running up a bag, man, don't worry, you're gonna fuck it up. That you're gonna fuck it up. It's it, it's it's only you're natural. Fuck it up. It's only right. natural. You're gonna fuck just it up. Just learn from and, it. And honestly, yeah, just learn from it. Like I, I like run through. Yeah, you're, you're gonna get your first twenty, thirty thousand. You know what I'm saying? You're going to fuck it up. You're going to fuck it up. It's very easy to fuck it up, and that's fine because whatever you did the first time, you could redo it again. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, that financial literacy is it, it, it goes into that. It's like, man, people people don't realize like, yo, the way that we're taught to spend money is a fucking is it's poison, bro. We're, like we're we're in a capitalist society. It's all that's what it's all about. It, it's all about there. You, you, there's so many ads out there. That's that's all it is. They it's a, it's all subconscious. They want you to get you to spend everything and everything and upgrades here and upgrades there and then. And now it's this subscription and this yeah, subscription. And this it, lifestyle and this lifestyle. It, you got to live like this to look a certain way. You got to live like that to and, live a certain way. And, and that's why it was going to what I said before is not being too, being even killed about the whole thing. You get your, you get your, your, your big six-figure promotion and you maintain the same lifestyle you had before. Now that's when you rack it in. Mm-hmm. That's when you really rack it in. 100%. But if, if you get all emotional about it, you know, you, you, which is very natural to do. Right, right, right. You get all emotional about it. Oh, now I got to look the part. Right. Now that's when you start slowly, Burn, slowly. Bugging. Yeah, that's when you start. <laughs> yeah. But I do believe in looking the part. As, not not all the way, like, what you're saying. Like, now you got to buy the watch. Now you got to buy this and that. Now you got to buy this and that. But nah, like, look the part. Like, if you about to walk into a, 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 a certain kind of meeting, throw, throw the suit oh, on. You, you know oh, you have to you, look You got to throw the suit on. You know what I'm saying? Go get a haircut. Like, I, I tell people, man, you got to look good to, to get... You got to look good to feel, to feel good, good. And you need both of those to get the money. Yes. Like, it's... it's People go into these slums, man, and I, I tell people, take care of yourself, man. Make sure you, you look how you want to look. Like, look in the mirror and make sure you're the exact image that you see in your head. Like, start you, working on that. You you have to convince yourself before you can convince anyone else. No, 100%. If, if, cause That's if a fact. You, if you right. walk, if you walk cause, pe- cause energy is real. If uh-huh. you walk in and, and and you think you're faking, everyone knows you're faking. Oh, yeah. You got to yeah. walk in knowing, like, you are that nigga. 100%. And once you know you are, everybody <laughs> will... That that energy will permeate throughout the room. Exactly, exactly. Confidence is key, man. You need that confidence, like, and and, and you're only gonna build that confidence. And like you said, you have to convince yourself first. Are you, you oh, you have you you're, you're, you're the you have to convince yourself I'll be, first before I'll be anything. I'm looking in the mirror like I'm him. Oh, I'm oh, like, like, <laughs> like, like in the mirror more than some time. Like, I'm him. Like we gonna get this shit done today. Like I be having quotas in my head. Like I, I gotta make certain this. I gotta make this much. I gotta make sure I, not even just a quota. Like how much money I wanna make. It'll be like all right. I gotta make sure I handle this, 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 and this errand. Absolutely, you know what I'm yes. Especially because what I do, like where I'm, when I'm working, I'm locked in, bro. You're not gonna hear from me for the next 10, 12 hours. Like, Legit, I'm, I'm gone. Like people know how I am with the that's phone. That's why I'm that, that, so that's that, and that's why I'm, that's why I admire you so much because I know you're such such on your grind. No, thank you. You, you, you really, you know, you really inspire me as well. And to go back to say financial literacy, I'm not saying at the same time you want to live your life. You want to do what you want to no, do. No facts. You gotta if if if. if if going out and buying this this item is really gonna make you happy, right. go out and get by that right, item. Right, right, right. If, if, that's, what, going, if, if that's, that's what you want to do with your life, if that's what's gonna make you happy, hundred percent. If 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 you want to go out for a night out, and that's gonna make you happy buying this buying a section, then do it. Yeah. But but it's it's all moderation. It's right. all moderation. Yeah, you life, can, you life can have it in moderation. Yes, right. you can have it. In my, I don't I don't want I don't want people to act like I'm telling them to be frugal all the time. No. Yeah. You have to live your life at the same time. Life is too short for you. To not live. If do what you want to do, do what makes you happy. But at the same time, you can't overindulge. No, nah, just yeah, like anything. Sure. Yeah, just like anything, right? Too just much like salt, okay? Too much sugar, okay? So, for real, for real. So it's like, man, you 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 said a you said a really really important part where it's like, don't um, we're not telling you not to go 
do whatever the fuck you want to do. Go do that shit. You're going to have to learn, like, all right, that was dumb. I just yeah, spent 15 yes, minutes last yes. night. If, that was if, fucking if dumb. That's what you, if, that, if that's really makes you happy, if, if you worked what you need to do to get the money in order mm -hmm. to want to do something like that, go and do it. Yeah, like, if go that's what adds value to your life, going yes, out every yes, week. Yes, yes, Like, if that's what makes you happy, then by all then means. By but all if, means. But if you want to get on this financial track to, like, it, to grow and exactly. you want to be this millionaire you're speaking on, you got to focus up. You have to, yes. Focus up and create a plan. Find yes. out how you're gonna how you're going to start storing some money, put it into some assets. Don't don't just sit around liabilities because, like, certain things like cars and cribs, it's a liability for real. Like, that's why I always preach buying a home because, it's like, bro, you you pay rent. You don't even realize like That's the, the average one bedroom three. apartment and almost anywhere at this point. You want something moderately nice, you're gonna spend at minimum twelve, fifteen hundred. Really, yeah, really legit. fifteen, 15, 15 Easy. 15. You know yes. what I'm saying? Fifteen hundred dollars a month. What's that in a year? Like eighteen thousand. You know what I'm saying? Now you spend eighteen thousand a year in two or three years. You didn't spend sixty thousand, almost sixty thousand. Almost sixty. You know what I'm saying? You got fifty four thousand and. You could have went and bought a home in them three years. You could have just rocked out at your mom's crib or whatever that you were able to pay. You were able to not have to pay no rent and save and save that money. You know what I'm saying? And matter of fact, important, important gem, bro. If you are living rent free, you don't pay nothing at wherever you're staying. Make sure you're saving like an amount that's co comparable to, to com rent. To every rent, month. right? Yes. Like, like yes. five hundred a month, a thousand yes, a month. What you it. would be paying in rent. Put, put that aside. aside, right? Put, put that aside. to the side as if you are paying rent, and and just let that build because in a, in a year or two you put a thousand dollars a month away, in two years you'll have twenty four thousand. Twenty four, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and twenty four thousand dollars in two years, it, it doesn't sound like you could do too much with twenty four thousand because when people think about buying a home, they think, oh, I'm gonna need sixty, a hundred thousand. Down payment, bro. A first payment. time buyer's loan, free gem. I'm trying to tell you 24, something. Twenty four thousand dollars. Get you an FHA, payment. a first time buyer's loan. It is literally where you when when the average conventional loan for a mortgage is you have to put down twenty percent. Plus the closing cost. And 20%, let's say you got a $300,000 home, 20% would be 60,000. 60, 60 Six, racks. 60, 60 racks. And now uh, closing cost is normally like 40 to 60%, you say? Not like four, like four, four, like, like 40 three, four. Set. Three, four, five percent. No, no, I'm saying like thirty to forty percent of like of the close. Like on average, like if you got to put a sixty percent um, closing cost, I mean, if you're putting down sixty thousand, yes. what would the closing cost be on something like that? It depends. It depends. Depends. But well, I, it, it's only like five percent, three to five percent of the actual purchase price of the home. Okay, three to five percent, which would be like another like ten, fifteen thousand yeah. easily. Okay, seventy five thousand. So now when you get a first time buyer's loan, though, you only have to put down an average of like three to four percent. You know what I'm saying? Three instead and of half. instead of 20%, right? You put down three and a half. Certain states is a little different, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. So that's why I'm Certain saying it broad because yeah. I'm not just talking to Jersey. I'm talking to the world right now. So you 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 only put down, let's say three percent. Let's just use an easy number. Three percent. Now three percent of a three hundred thousand dollar home is nine thousand for people who can calculate at the crib. You know what I'm saying? Nine thousand. Then you got to go put down the closing cost, which would be like you said, another another four to five percent of a three hundred thousand dollar crib. So another ten, fifteen thousand. And what's nine thousand plus fifteen thousand? Twenty four thousand. Literally, what I just told you, you have in two years of saving up a thousand dollars a month. And also, there are ways that Pretty you done. can finance your closing costs. But that's another topic for another day. Hey, man, listen. You don't even have got, to put your you, closing costs out of pocket. If you have real estate questions and you need to figure out how you are going to buy that home, this is the man you need to holler at. We're going to put his Instagram on the description and all that so y'all can make sure y'all check him out. Listen, man, you're we, we, doing really big things. And, and don't don't underestimate this man. I'm trying to tell you. Don't <laughs> underestimate this man, bro. He, he's working harder than you, I promise. Like much, he, much appreciated. He's, I'm telling you, he's working harder <laughs> than you. And, that, and I, I, I can say that to you because, because I know that's how I feel. Like, I know I'm working harder. Oh, I know. Like, I know. Oh, and I know. I know for Don't a fact. Don't get me wrong. There's people working harder than me, 100%. 1,000%. And I, and I admire those people. Those are the people I look up to. But it's like, bro, do the most. Do the most every day. Try to wake up, try to wake up and do the most every day. Try to get it. Try to, try to, try to win the day. Conquer the day. Even, don't even try, man. Go do it. That's I don't even like trying. When I be like, yo, I've been telling people about this podcast, like, yo, I'm about to try to do it. I'm not, no, no, I'm, about, I'm, like, I'm not trying to do shit. I'm telling people, I'm, I'm about to try to do, do this. I'm, I'm about to try to do this, uh, the, the, this, do this rental company. Just do it. Do it. Like, I'm not like, trying to like do anything. I, like I, I'm going to. I changed my vernacular because you got to change the you, way you speak sometimes. You, no, you no, absolutely. You have to change your vernacular. No, 100%. You got to change the way you speak because people don't even realize they speak so negatively into their life sometimes and without realizing it. They'll be like, like you, yo, free gem. My mom taught me this shit when I was a kid, man, working at her store. All right, so let me not rattle on too long, but long story short, man, negativity travels so much further than positivity. Like, if you don't see it in the news and in the music, 
Niggas ain't listening to Nas no more. We listen to Gra Gra, shoot him up, kill him that, up. Because negativity that's what's out, yes. But New, the news is all, it's always sad. She gave it to me like this, though. She was like, I, uh, when, because I used to work at the counter, like, it was like a MoneyGram, Western Union kind of situation where, like, I'm sending money to other countries. I was working with a lot of, like, South American uh, people that were sending money back home. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole nother topic I actually want to bring out. I got to talk about my South Americans, my Mexicans, my El Salvadorians, Ecuadorians, all of them. Because, man, I admire Shout the out fuck out them. there working. Seriously. I admire the fuck out Seriously. the way they take care their families, the way that they they Family go out first. on a limb and spend ten years in America doing construction, making a thousand a week, which is like five times what they make out there in their country, and they are taking care of whole villages between two or three, and they manage a way to get over here. You know what I'm saying? But um, going back to what I was saying about my mom, all right? So she was telling me like, yo, the negativity travels so much more than the positivity. Um, you want to make sure you treat every client right because you treat one client wrong. And they're gonna go back and tell people, man, fuck that store. They 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 violate. You know what I'm saying? But you treat them right. They're not gonna go out and go tell somebody, man, you should go to that store, man. They, they they're so they're so nice over there. Like, go spend your money with them. No, you just had that positive experience and that's it. It vanished. Now a negative experience, they're gonna dwell on that shit. And they're gonna be like, man, fuck that person. I'm never going back to that. And they're gonna be thinking about that even after they walk out that store. They're gonna be thinking about that the next time they have to go to your store, and they're gonna go to a different store because of that, you know what I'm saying? Because of that same um interaction. So I I, I say that because it's um same thing with like if you think about it, when people come home from having a bad day at work, they're way more they're way more uh, likely to likely continue. to talk right to, to to talk about it. Like man, this bitch gonna be fucked up at work when they come in the house and they want to start talking about all this negativity and shit. Today they feed it, they give it to their partner, whoever they're talking to, their kids. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that and that and, energy and they're radiating yeah. and they right you're bringing that shit home can't have that bro get into some positivity like don't speak too much on the negative like i understand it could be a woman and you feel like you need a relief and you need to talk about it do that but pack it the fuck up give it a couple minutes pack it up you can't don't do that too much some people that's all they do is, is yeah. gossip and talk blah blah yeah, rah rah that's all listen that's man. low frequency low thank you right there <laughs> yeah for real and you don't even realize it because it's so natural to go into no, the negative absolutely. so I don't even want to fault you like if you find yourself and you realize you're one of those people man just try to change it it goes back to changing the way we speak like I was saying changing the, changing the way we, we, we speak will change the way you think will change your, your reality completely so you know what I'm saying you definitely want to be speaking into the positive man because you're way more likely to just dwell on the negative it's just very natural you know what I'm saying come home Complaining, you don't come home like you know what I'm saying. Speak too much positive. Oh, this like, is yo, a great I had a great lunch. Oh, wonderful like, day today. I had a, oh I had my a great gosh. lunch today. Like, nah, you had your Popeyes <laughs> and you packed it up. It was cool. It was great. You had the barbecue sauce. Everything was lit. You feel me? But you're not gonna go home and talk about that. But that negativity, man, motherfuckers, be, pss, motherfuckers are dwelling over that shit. Is poisonous, and, bro. And 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 what and and what is the thing that every, everything that's popular today is is negative and conflict. Right. No reality look, TV. Look at the, right. All all negative right, and conflict. Right, that, that's right. that's what sells. That's what people watch. Right. Literally, they don't even want man. Th these labels are looking for rappers that got beef. You shit. You can't be a rapper right now if you don't got an op. No, you're right. If you don't got <laughs> if you don't got an op, nigga, you, what are you doing? How are you a rapper? How are we supposed to sell this? That's how they really look yeah. at it. How are we supposed to sell this, man? <laughs> like. For real, it's to the point where people create fake beefs because that's what sells. That's what sells. And you look at all the biggest the publicity TV, stunts. Right. That's how. That's what sells. Look at the news. When you turn on that eleven o'clock, ten o'clock news, the first thing three people get shot over here. A fucking. There was a stabbing on the train. Right. It was stabbing <laughs> on the train. Like six women went missing. The polar bear went loose in the Bronx Zoo. I'm like, like nigga, what? Damn. The fuck is going like, on? What's going on? But in that's, the what world. That's, that's what sells. That's what sells. That's what gets people's attention. Right. Right. That attracts people's attention. It don't it don't it don't hit the same as oh this charity did this, this and that, whatever. Like it's not that of course we applaud it and we love it, but it don't this, this, we're not gonna go talk about that. This I'm not fireman gonna, saved the right, lives. I'm not gonna go save this cat's life right, in I'm a not, burning building. Right. I'm not gonna mention that. I'm not gonna be talking about oh my god, did you see uh, the Let's, whatever positive I don't fucking know. This, yeah. this dude donated fifteen hundred to St. Jude's Hospital. I'm not gonna go talk about that. No. I am gonna go talk about yo, you heard yo, about these, them five niggas that got shot in Patterson? Yo, that was crazy. Like, yo, that's cra it, it, it just be like that. You know what I'm saying? It's very natural. Like we will our brain is geared towards it's, the negative, so it's important to gear it towards the positive. Like exercise that muscle. Our brain is a muscle. Like people forget. People that. don't realize that. People don't realize. People that. don't realize and that. And the more you exercise, the more you read, the more you you know what I'm saying. Anything you focus in on is a reason. Like you said, the mind is so powerful. It's so it's 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 a powerful muscle. Everybody thinks that oh I need to work out externally. Everybody oh I I gotta eat right for my body, but they don't 100%. work their muscle. They don't damn. work the, the biggest muscle is their brain. God damn this motherfucker right here. No seriously. <laughs> no seriously. No hundred percent. No hundred percent, bro. It, it it gets over it gets overlooked so much. No percent. Sure. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> yeah, like I said, man, we can go on all day. I just realized we, shit, we just ran through 
like it was nothing, man. That it, that was that felt very organic. I, I'm I'm feeling this, so yeah. I'm excited, yes, man. Episode one. This episode, episode one. one. We, much uh, more to come. Much more to come. But way more to come. We're gonna discuss a lot more topics, more in depth. We kind of touched on a bunch of stuff. I was rattling a little, a little longer than I needed to, but um. No, it's all. It's all. It was kind of. It was kind of the umbrella today. The yeah, umbrella. yeah, and it's gonna probably be like this for the next couple episodes while we figure out because I eventually want to get into like reacting to people live, having topics. You know what I'm saying? I want to get into like questions and stuff. I want people to comment. Man, on the YouTube channel and let me know what you want us to discuss or uh, you know what I'm saying even if you if you got like a dope story or something man I want you you, you can reach you want, out yeah. hit me up on Instagram I'm gonna put my name in the description I'm gonna put Kamal's name in the, the, our Instagram names in the description so y'all can reach out I want to hear the stories man I want to bring out here I, I want this show to be about the gaining perspectives organic, like I want organic. it to be free gems but I needed to gain perspectives because like I said perspectives man that it's shit perspective is everything, is everything. Everything. Listen, bro. life life is a learning. I'd rather I'd rather learn from your experiences than make my own. Nah, for sure. I'd rather man. learn from your experience, your mistakes than make my own. <laughs> nah, hundred percent. That's what man. it's all about. And, and one quote that I always want to leave some people with is, man, listen. Whether you think you're right or you think you're wrong, you're right either way. Hundred <laughs> percent. And on that note, man, I just wanna um I wanna logo by saying, man, rest in peace to my brother Miles. You know what I'm saying, Miles Andrew oh, yes. Brinson. Oh, you know what I'm gosh. saying, my my R. brother, R. man, love you. I just wanted to make sure I put that out that episode one, man. Me manifesting big things out here, man. And um. I think that's I, right. I got one last thing to say. Go ahead, um, go So we're talking about um, positive self-talk. I have a wonderful book. What do you say when you talk to yourself? Go look at look that up. Biggest gem it. of the day. He what just do you gave you some when you talk literature. To <laughs> you motherfuckers Please better go, go listen. That. Listen, I, go I, get I forgot, that book. I forgot the author, but it, it's white with red letters on it. What, what's, the, what's the book called again? What do you say when you talk to yourself? What do you say when you talk to yourself, man? If you got any partners in jail or anything like that, man, go buy them that book and send it to them, man. They probably be, let them exercise that mind. You know what I'm saying on that note, we out. We out. Free gems, baby. <laughs> Episode one. Episode one of the books.